welcome to Trashy Trashy, where we take a dumpster dive on this week's garbage people and a look at all the trashiest news stories. My name is Erica, and I am your host. My name is Cassandra, and I'm your other host. What's up, my party people? I thought about pulling a fast one on you and changing up the intro and saying, like, I'm Cassandra, but then I thought, no, the chaos that could cause. The chaos. <laughs> this is a random Monday in October, girl. You can't just play those devilish pranks <laughs> i have a beautiful halloween costume idea okay but are, is it are you gonna spoil it if you say it on here or like i mean who cares right because here's the thing i'm probably not gonna do it why because it's so much work and if i was wanted to do this costume i should have started in april so i'll tell you my Whoa. two ideas right okay <laughs> the easy idea is by a 15 dollar suit off Shein yeah that looks like the Chanel patterns and then cover easy myself for you. easy for me $15 Shein cover myself in red paint and say I'm Jackie Onassis trashy easy Halloween costume for anybody out there right did somebody throw paint on her Chanel suit no when her husband was dead and she oh, was covered Christ. in paste <laughs> That's why it's trashy. I'm like, wow, PETA was even around back then? What's wrong with a Chanel suit? I forgot about that whole other thing. No, the hard costume, the hard costume is Baby Billy singing in the seashell from the Righteous Gemstones. Baby Billy Freeman. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be real. I asked costume designers. I was like, how would I reconstruct this shell? And, you know, that's going to be the hard part. And I'm just, I'm sitting here thinking, I don't want to be an absolute dirtbag and do the Jackie O thing, even though that'd be really funny. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the other one's going to be really hard. So then I'm just like, well, guess I'm just going to be where's purple lipstick on Halloween again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have a couple of questions. Yes. One, I'm not trying to be rude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Are you invited to anything? <laughs> or are you throwing anything? <laughs> Halloween is my anniversary. Mine and Winston's anniversary. That's that's nice. You guys are one of those types. <laughs> <laughs> I, At the I don't think anything by this because you guys have been together for like a decade. So it's like I can't even like talk shit, you know? But like yep. <laughs> I just feel like – okay, look. So – in high school, I was dating this guy, and he was, like, a fucking asshole. And during one of the moments when him and I broke up, mm -hmm. he started dating this fucking bitch mm -hmm. who I felt like literally – oh, my God. I said fucking bitch, and my uh, Siri came on. Girl, I'm not talking to you. She knows her name. Okay. Yeah, I know. Bitch. Um, anyways, so I, this fucking bitch starts dating him. And she's always gone after my crushes. I was actually thinking about her the other day of like, oh, yeah, there was that guy in my science class because, you know, me and this guy I dated in high school were in one of our off periods. So it's like, oh, my God, there was a guy in science class who was like, like looking back was like really stupid. But mm -hmm. like, I just thought he was so cute. And I was like, and that fucking bitch went after him. And then so she started dating my ex-boyfriend and their anniversary was oh. Halloween. And like, just like, again, <laughs> you and I have been together for a long time. But like, I just like, have an image in my head of like, uh, uh, anniversary is Halloween. So we're, so, we're kind of spooky. <laughs> we're so kind Halloween of was different. The first time we were officially together in public. So we it was a complicated getting together, but Halloween was where we were like showed up to an event in a couple's costume and we're like, we're together. So that's what we call it. Yeah. So you'd been dating already. So well, you really are on. those people then you're like, yeah, let's yeah, we, we, really, let's we call really it spooky. make this. We're we really spooky. This is going to be, people's <laughs> minds are going to be blown. Like who would start dating on Halloween if not us little freaks? Anyway. We call it All Hallows Eve. <laughs> of course Thanks. you do. Of course no. you do. Anyways, no, I'm nowhere sorry. To go. Nowhere to go. Of course not. But I didn't think that was going to trigger me so much. That's all I'm no. saying. 
I get you. I get you. What, what's so you have on? nowhere to go. You have nowhere to go. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not going to ask you if you think that this Jackie Onassis costume is appropriate because obviously you do. Um, no, I'm saying it's it's absolute garbage. It's inappropriate. It's beyond inappropriate. But I feel like enough time has passed, right? I mean... Do you know my theory about the JFK assassination? Do you know the one I sit with? A sentence that nobody wants to hear anyone close to them say. Okay. An absolute (laughs) bomb of a sentence (laughs) that you're getting to know someone and then they say that. Or you've known someone as long as I've known you and then you say that. I'm like, shit. (laughs) I lost her. I'm Um, in the wrong boat. Okay, so. Go ahead and and spread this information. Here are facts. Facts. Oh, no. No, This is true. This is all true. Facts. (laughs) The senior Secret Service agents went out to a strip club to like four or five o'clock in the morning in Dallas the night before. They were Uh shmammered. So they get up. Obviously, we have to like, you know, do our job, which is protect the president. And so the junior guys, a lot of them had to step into the senior roles because all those dudes were hung over. So the wheel man, this guy named George Dickey. Is this the driver? No, so he was just, like, making sure that the, like, presidential limo was not wheeled. Like, like, he wasn't, you know, he he wasn't a gun guy, right? He wasn't he a was gun guy. He was the wheel man. He was the wheel man. Yeah. I still don't get it, but okay, go on. Okay, so, uh, or wait, was it Hickey or Dickey? Maybe, I, wait. You gotta get your it facts straight. I'm sorry, okay. it was George Hickey. Okay, so these are facts. Okay. Back to this. Uh-huh. So, this guy George Hickey is um, not trusted. Like he doesn't even have a gun. And so, one of the hungover senior Secret Service guys hands him an AR-15, which again he's never handled. He's literally the guy that's just like limos full of gas. That's it, right? So, what I think happened is absolutely Lee Harvey Oswald took a shot from the book repository. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, and this is backed up by many things. It's called the mortal error theory, mortal, mortal (laughs) error theory. Basically it was a workplace accident. So that one hit Kennedy, right? You know, they're like the magic bullet and all this explanation. Cause the other bullet was that guy accidentally shooting off his rifle and being the one that actually shot Kennedy and blew his head up. He like, so you t- think a hundred percent Lee Harvey Oswald because mm. was there two shots there were so that's that's the whole thing is like were there two or three what's this magic bullet all of this stuff so like they heard yeah yeah I, I think George Hickey accidentally shot the president and again <sighs> accident right where was he. So he was in the limb along like he again, all the senior guys who know what they're doing were hung over and not taken up, you know, where they should have been. They give this guy an AR fifteen when he's never held one before. This is all backed up by fact. Now the did he shoot him? Who who can say? Right. But why would he... he lost like basically when the limo stopped, all this blah, 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 happened and this guy shot him on accident. We we simply can't get into it, but he dislodged the caliber. <laughs> so in the car stop, he lost his balance, probably tripped, and then discharged the weapon and is the one that hit the head injury. Not not Lee Harvey Oswald. Lee Harvey Oswald absolutely shot him. One of his bolts was from Lee Harvey Oswald. But the other was from this George Hickey tripping and accidentally shooting his weapon because all the senior dudes were hung over and this guy's like, limo has gas, thumbs up, you know. Okay. That's that's what I think. Anyway, so if you so want to send the white the coats ch- over to my house, yeah, and have me commit so anyway. Anytime, <laughs> Jackie Onassis. So yeah. that's why you want to wear that costume. So if you do get invited somewhere, you yeah. can spout that nonsense all night. My conspiracy theories, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, okay, that's all I ever want to be invited to anything for is to spout yeah, off my know. theories. All I right, that's me. I'm garbage. I'm garbage. Why are you trash? Is that why you are you taking that as to why you're trash? Because <laughs> you just made our 
nice little trashy news podcast into a QAnon session. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll save my trash for another time. <laughs> That's why I'm trash, is that I want to dress up like that, and I have this conspiracy theory that I firmly believe in. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if there's a conspiracy theory that I firmly believe in that I could say is why I'm trash, but nothing is coming to mm-hmm. mind right now, so I oh, guess I'll just- you think this is the same Avril Lavigne? Oh, yeah. No, I'm not touching that again. We got <laughs> some weirdos after that episode. We really did. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. I'm trash mm-hmm. because I had a bit of a breakdown mm. and stuff. I mean, I'm fine, you know. I, I just had a little bit of a moment, you know, couldn't control my emotions, et cetera, et cetera, and decided to cut my bangs. I have no money. I can't get my hair dyed, like whatever. I was like, I have this pig patch of gray. I'm going to cut my hair. I'm going to have bangs now, whatever. Mm-hmm. So... First attempt, quite successful, actually. But then they grew out, as bangs do. And I was like, okay, what am I doing? Am I keeping this? Or mm-hmm. am I like, what's up? So I was like, I'm going to keep it for a little bit longer. My first attempt, I don't know why it went so well. Because my second attempt, like, <laughs> super did not. Yeah. You know? I had been binging New Girl. And so I, like, became a bangs aficionado the first time. Of course. This of course. next time, I was like, well, I nailed it that first time. I don't need to watch a couple of New Girl episodes back to back to visualize. I'm just going to do this. And I cut straight across. Oh, no. Yeah. You're right. Apparently, you don't do that. (laughs) It makes so much sense, though. But you don't do that, I guess. And so I I, I looked at them and I was like, huh, those are above my eyebrows, which was not how they used to look. Right. Which luckily I have the face for it, but I was like, of course. I'm like an inch away from like a full Betty Page, which is such an energy. That's, you know, my anniversaries on Halloween kind of energy that I, I wasn't going for. I wasn't going for. And, uh, sorry. I'm just coming for everybody right now. So I was like, immediately after, I was like, okay, well, I guess this is fine. I don't know. And so then after the fact, I like looked how to cut own bangs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it was done. The da- the damage was done. And yeah, sure enough, they're like, grab them, flip them upside <laughs> down and start <laughs> chopping away. Like, do not cut across. Mm-hmm. I repeat, do not cut across. And I'm like, what? What happens? Why doesn't this work? Yeah. Why can't you cut in a straight line? It's a... Uh... Did you see the TikTok of the sisters and the bangs and the whole thing? No. So this like 12-year-old girl, maybe, she's doing a front-facing video and she's like, hey, guys, I'm going to show you my get ready with me. You know, I think that's really cute. I like these kids doing that, right? Okay. So it's a sister. Again, camera's front-facing. Two of her little sisters run in and, you know, just like little sister energy, da, da, da. But one of them has tried to cut the other's bangs and then the big sister's like okay shut up okay i'm gonna fix this like mom cannot find out because school picture day guess when that is it's tomorrow oh no it's tomorrow so older sister has to like cut bangs in such a way because little sister tried you know it's just like the other little sister's like mom's coming it's really really cute and they it just it's like a whole like coming of age movie in like a 90 second tiktok but <laughs> it's really sweet and then mom comes in she's like what's going on what's all the yelling and they're like nothing you know holding like, their hand over her forehead. <laughs> then they did an update with the picture from school picture day and she looks great but it was just real i'll have to send it to you it was really sweet and really cute but you know school picture day that's a big part of school Another thing that happens in the fall, homecoming. Oh, so we should get to our first story? Yeah, sent in by Daddy Trashcan Adam Cantley. Thank you. Will you go to Burger King with me? Mmm. Are you hungry? Check yes or no. Yes. Well, it's homecoming season, and at Burger King, you don't need to be in high school to experience the magic. This is from the CourierPostOnline.com. Burger King's nationwide are offering guests the perfect homecoming dinner date for only ten dollars so it's called the burbank oh god burbank help me 
I was just thinking about homecoming. <laughs> uh, it's called the BK Homecoming Meal, where you share two Whopper Junior sandwiches, two shakes, and a small order of both onion rings and French fries. With that, someone special this fall. Should we go do this? Absolutely. We got to get the crowns. That's the only yeah. thing Burger King ever had over McDonald's or any other fast food was the crowns. Controversial opinion. Yeah. I prefer Burger King's food to wow. McDonald's. <laughs> okay, listener, podcast over. Thanks so much for tuning in to Trashy Trashy. Really? Oh, wow. Okay. If I'm stuck in a corner and they're like, which one of these do you want? Sloppy yeah. grease sponge or cardboard grease sponge? I'm going to go cardboard. And that's what Burbank – or um, God, what that's what – that's what Burger King has to offer me. Mm -hmm. wow. I keep saying Burbank instead of Burger King. It's absolutely crazy. Is Burbank the Burger King of LA? Maybe. I guess so. That is hard to take in. I've had a McDonald's renaissance in the last few years. Because I was like, ew, no, never eating McDonald's. And then I'm like, you know what's reliable? You know it's going to taste the same. You know it's going to be good. McDonald's. And now they have the app. This isn't an ad for them, but they have the app and you can get free food and give them a code. I, I'm a, I'm a See, McDonald's girly. What I like is that Burger King. <laughs> See, Burbank now what, Burger King. <laughs> I know. What Burger King offers is a huge inconsistency between... <laughs> Location to location yeah. and day to day. Yeah, and you're really I, rolling the dice with fate there. It's honestly akin to going to a high level chef's tasting menu. And it's like whatever the chef feels like today. And Omakase. that's kind of. Burger King is Omakase. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think so. Because it's like you can definitely order a Whopper Junior or a chicken sandwich <sighs> or like fries but like is the chicken sandwich that you're going to receive going to be a more avant-garde uh deconstruction of a chicken sandwich where it's like they were perhaps constructing a blindfolded big slop of mayo i think they pre-mix their lettuce with the mayo which Ooh. i think is something <laughs> different that mcdonald's doesn't do no um you know what though what back in the 1990s when the when the acclaimed film Wild Wild West starring Will Smith and Calvin Calvin Klein Kevin Klein who the fuck who is this Calvin Kevin Klein, Klein? yeah it was, no it's Kevin Klein right it's yes. Kevin Klein okay yeah. not Calvin Klein um you're crazy when that came out in the Happy or the Burbank of uh, <laughs> Help me. Listeners, leave it all in. It's 5 a.m. in the morning. So Cassandra's having a hard time with words right now. It's like there's one Burger King in Burbank and they used it for for uh what's that stupid movie about time Burger? travel? No, no, it's about time travel, Marty, the Back DeLorean. The yes, okay, it's in that movie. Anyways, holy shit. Wild Wild West, if you got it at that time in the 1990s when Wild Wild West was in mm -hmm. theaters, you got a pair of sunglasses. You got the really tiny oh. sunglasses that Will Smith would wear in that movie. Low key, that movie fucking slaps. I don't care what anybody says. I, I haven't turned seen down it the in a Matrix. long time. I love that movie. He turned down the Matrix for that? Yeah that's okay because it didn't really affect him yeah um i love that movie no regrets so catchy Selma hayek's in it right oh sure she oh, is I, I think she's the most beautiful woman in the world steampunk fantasy yes. yeah it's the, the a bad guy like movie. a racist that's also a spite like wants to be a spider-man <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> That movie starts with Will Smith like 
fucking in a water tower. And then the water tower falls and they live. All they're like, whoops, can I have my hat to cover my dick? Beep, 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 beep. Bye. That's why Cowboy, that's why Cowboy hats are so big, like 10 gallon hats, is because they had to cover themselves all the time because they were always fucking in water towers and then falling down. The anxiety that I got with the. The, they have that metal collar in it where if at any <gasps> at any time if they like press Touch. a button, it's like a magnet. Yeah, you come and chop your head off. The anxiety that that gave me as a child of yes. like, damn, if they put one of those on you, it really is game over because you can't outrun it. You know, like but they do somehow because they make the magnets hit each other. Yes, yes, that is how wow. our heroes. <laughs> survived <laughs> we we man. simply can't recap the waffle bus but it's a great movie. we're not telling you to go watch it because obviously we're striking still for sag but we also have no idea how it aged do you oh. know how wild wild west aged because i don't i know the villain is like absolute confederate bad guy and like him and will smith but he I, loses he loses but they have like an exchange of kind of like ooh, do 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 like racist sure. comment and will smith making like you don't have no legs comment and i'm like oh i bet that scene is rough today yeah i bet like double entendres and very like oh polite and southern yeah 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 speaking of, of legs <laughs> we gotta Woo! get out of this we, we gotta go i saw this on twitter and then people started sending it in so if you had, did thank you so much but i'm gonna claim it because i saw it first wow yeah i said it denied entry just like this man was with his emotional support alligator yes this is a uh, philadelphia phillies fan trying to come into a game with his emotionally or emotional support animal, his service animal, mm -hmm. who just happens to be an alligator on a leash. Now listen, the alligator named Wally Gator, perfect name, no notes, perfect name. Sure. He was denied entry, which is, honestly, this is a disability rights case. That is, mm-mm-mm. Is it? Can we, can we not yeah. say that? Because I- It's not an 18-foot- alligator it's probably maybe a six footer but it's pretty it's pretty tight and that's tail most that's tail you know it's pretty tiny and he seems chill he seems chill well i want to know <laughs> yeah because isn't philadelphia like under new york um i geographically yes and in stature of city yes boom you're roasted Damn. um i'm just saying wait is philadelphia that's not no phil it's in Pennsylvania. It's in Pennsylvania. Uh, oh, okay, okay. I was having a hard time finding the state. Um, how are you going to get a gator up there? That feels like the plot of Maine Justice. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best. One of the best SNL skits. We won't get into it. Just Google it. Maine Justice. Do the one where Jamie Foxx is hosting. Yes. Not the Justin Timberlake one. It's yes. like we'd already seen it, you know? One of our most talented uh people in the alive. He's funny. He can act. He can sing. He can dance. Jamie Foxx, you're saying. Jamie not Fox. Justin Timberlake. Okay. No, no. You, you're going to be a cold day in New York before you catch me complimenting that man, JT. Can I say something controversial? Please, yeah. <laughs> we will never get through a story this, this, is this the, episode. This is the this platform is, to do it. This is the rogue episode. <laughs> I think, you know, like, obviously Justin Timberlake has, like, fallen from grace little by little by little because mm -hmm. people just, like, don't give a shit anymore. And then mm -hmm. also, like, the Britney Spears stuff and mm -hmm. all this kind of thing. But, like, it, with all this, like, in sync reunion stuff, I'm like, oh, wow, things have gotten bad for him. <laughs> because... <laughs> Honestly, like Backstreet Boys started re like doing reunion stuff like a while ago because mm -hmm. none of them had a career to shake a couple pennies at, you know, without <laughs> each other. Mm -hmm. But Justin Timberlake had a huge career alone, but now he's starting to do this stuff again. And I'm like, oof. They're reuniting for the Trolls movie. This okay, man has girl. become a troll based movie superstar. He had a whole hit on. The Trolls movie alone. He didn't need them. I think Except I guess now he does. And you know those other four guys are picking up the phone. So I, I think just, he's doing it for the boys. I think, babe, I think he's not doing it for the boys. 
He's doing this to rehab his image. I'm sorry, but as a PR professional, as of this moment, he is <laughs> only doing this. <laughs> he is only doing this because nobody fucking likes him anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nobody fucking likes him anymore. Mm-mm. So he's having to regress and be like, remember why you used to like me? And here's all my, here's all the other guys again. And now, now you like me. That's all that's happening. His, you're that's saying his reviews happening. have taken a nosedive. Yes, I would say that his reviews have taken a nosedive and that perhaps perhaps he, it was a little bit more hype than it was worth. He was worth. That kind of brings us into our next story from everywhere, but we're pulling from a particular twi- tweet and the New York Times. New York's hottest steakhouse was a fake until Saturday night. This is crazy i love it um back in the day there was a vice video of people that made a fake restaurant i think somewhere in california but they it was a shed and they just started they made their a shed a restaurant started fake reviewing it on yelp it became the highest rated restaurant like in san francisco or something Uh uh-huh and this group of of a hacker house this group of merry pranksters Got together and they created a restaurant called Ma Ren Steakhouse. It was made, it was named after their friend, but it had a near perfect Google rating. 91 glowing reviews. Best steak I've ever had in New York. Chef Ma Rain is a genius god among men, but you could never get a reservation because it was just a prank. So their website and their voicemail stated that the restaurant on East 83rd Street, in Manhattan was fully booked for months which is an irresistible challenge for New Yorkers who like love to find hard to get reservations. And and so these reservation hunters, they treat it like a sport. And then last Saturday night, they made it real. <laughs> uh, it started kind of a jo- as a joke amongst friends. And so what they did was, what they did was the, the restaurant's address was actually this four bedroom brownstone that was their hacker house. And they rented an events place for the night. None of these people have professional cooking experience. None of these people <laughs> know anything oh about God. fruit cup or sommeliers or any of this. So they rented the event space and they started opening up the reservations to people that were calling and trying to get on that wait list. <laughs> so people were there and, you know, New Yorkers were paying $114 before tax tip and wine. And <laughs> <laughs> there was a four course menu. And so they were prepping. It was mostly college students, tech dropouts, all the stuff that were invited to fly in. There was a tropical storm that Saturday, Ophelia coming in and these staff of 60 people, they were their friends, college students, tech dropouts, all the stuff. Some people even flew in. They were prepping dinner. And so he sent them a Google Drive link to the menu and said, this is your Bible, your Quran. This is all we offer. They offered milk, wine, and steaks, basically. And people were like, well, what if somebody complains? What if, you know, how do they add a tip? And they're like, I don't know. I'll, I'll, we'll figure it out. Like, this is all just a goof. <laughs> so they bought a shit it's ton of It's not it. out of their hands, I think. <laughs> yeah, it really flew big. But yeah, people were coming in. They started to drive at 530. They had been prepping all day. They were like, you guys eat protein bars, start hydrating. We're going to be cooking all night. None of these people have food prep experience. So they they did a – one of my favorite things was they did – their, their menu was based off the life cycle of a cow. So kind of like the shtick was, was um, like, oh, the first course will be this based off the meadows, <laughs> like which was a salad. And then youth, which was veal meatballs and – agrarian synergies which is bruschetta with mozzarella and then some people were like wait am i being punked they they slowly started to catch on which is the best they had they they asked people to pose outside with posters for drake like drake fans and oh my god and like drake was inside eating <laughs> oh my god yeah yeah people i think that they had a fake proposal at one point and some people were like, wait, is this just like a – people were starting to catch on, I think. They were kind of like, is this – Are you this fucking, with us? Yeah. fucking with us? Yeah. But people were like, you know what? Disappointed. But they were also like, I don't know. 
much. I've spent more on less and it got us out of our neighborhood. <laughs> so I think people were kind of like, oh, okay, well, you got us. <laughs> I mean, it's New York, you know, like egg on, egg on egg your on face. face. Everything's That's, expansive. It's funny because when I was reading that, I was like, it feels like it's not that hard to make a fake restaurant and just say it's hard to get reservations. But yeah. they really made it harder than it needed to be. Yeah, Erica, copy. let's take a break. Oh, I'm so tired. Thank you. Thank nine, you. Nine, nine. Hey, Cass. What's up? What's your favorite Janis Joplin song? Um, Oh, Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? Mine, too. And that takes us to our next story, a Florida man. <laughs> From Fox35Orlando.com, Florida man was arrested after posting his new Mercedes Benz he stole on social media. He was arrested after deputies connected him to a string of car break-ins in Deltona that he reportedly did while driving around in his stolen Mercedes Benz. He was 23 and just got too big for his britches. Here's the thing. What? You gotta stop social media. I'm about to put on my social media hat. Stop posting about it. Stop. I'm going to say something Mm -hmm. that I think you'll agree with. And don't come for me, Gen Z, okay? Mm -hmm. Or Alpha. If you're Gen Alpha, don't listen to this podcast. Go to school. You're too young. Yeah, go to school. You're too young. Hey, Gen Z, you guys are like boomers. (laughs) 100% 100% Gen Z is so boomer. They hate sex scenes. They do they're boomers. They hate us. They hate millennials, which is yep. the number one boomer attribute. Absolutely. They hate us. Uh, uh, Gen X continues to fly under the radar. Like mm-hmm. no one gives a fuck about Gen X. They're just the forgotten like they, child. No one they didn't ever says shit about Gen X. Like they just don't even exist. But so they hate millennials, which mm-hmm. so do our parents, which are boomers. Mm-hmm. And they, yes, they don't like sex scenes. They are, and they take to social media to be so pissed. Mm-hmm. They just, like, they don't do it hardly any better than a boomer does. Mm-mm. I mean, <sighs> don't get I'm me started saying on it. That. No, they are. They absolutely are. I 100% Kids, agree. Kids, you need to grow up and you need to see, look at grandma and grandpa and see what you're becoming because this isn't, this isn't good. No. I mean, are grandma and grandpa dead? I don't, I don't know because Gen Z are the Gen X kids. Hate your parents. Leave us alone. God. Get mad at them, not us. (laughs) Yeah. You're you're the assholes bringing ballet flats back. Okay. That's a problem. Oh my humanity god your feet you don't know this yet because you're young your feet are gonna stink (laughs) you're they're gonna stink and they're gonna hurt have you ever heard of something called plantar fasciitis because you're gonna get it you're you're gonna gonna get get it it in those ballet flats no arch support having ballet flats look this idiot posted this like hey i got like here i am in my sick car just so stolen and cops use social media does yes, you know cops use social media in all sorts of funny ways and this is my favorite way that they're using it our next story <laughs> this is from the lewisham central policing team on twitter and their post says great work by officers for having a sweet smell of success to identify two males acting suspiciously the males were stopped and had bags full to the brim with confectionery that were obviously not bought for consumption by themselves. Approximately 367 pounds seized. Hashtag sweet justice. They have this candy and Red Bull laid out like it's Pablo Escobar's Like it's stash. cocaine. Like it's cocaine. <laughs> it's just candy bars and full sugar Red Bulls. So you know they're young. <laughs> But they laid it out like, yeah, like absolutely like a drug bust. <laughs> it's honestly shocking that we don't have another angle of them holding guns next to it, like so proudly, but they're just actually babies. But they, <laughs> cops don't have guns. Oh, they don't. don't. The- oh, shit. I should move. Yeah, I know. Right. Right. <laughs> oh, man. That, that's got me all worked up. That's got me all worked up. I need to take a break. Okay, break. I'm Jeff. I'm Rich. And I'm Max. Are you a fan of sitting? 
What about looking? Maybe even, dare I say, observing? Then do we have a podcast for you. Welcome to TV Pilot's License, where we talk about the most famous and infamous pilot TV episodes of all time. Each episode, we go in-depth on what made our favorite TV show so special or despised in our hearts. We're covering everything from girls to golden girls. From the newsroom to news radio. From housewives to desperate housewives. So come fly with TV Pilot's License every Thursday, wherever you get your podcasts. And we're back! We're back! Erica? Yes? Are you ready to cut that? Oh, I guess you weren't ready then. Because, yeah, (laughs) we cut that. Well, let's cut that. So our first we cut that is from the Daily Mail in the UK. And this is about two travel influencers who got a free trip to Barbados. And then it turned into hell because they got a $3,000 bill when they got sick. And I'm just sitting here laughing in American. So (laughs) They were like, we had this and this, and then the whole bill added up to three grand. Now, is three grand a lot of money? Of course, especially if you have public health like they do in the UK. Uh, $3,000? In America, that'd be $300,000, and you'd be bankrupt. I just think it's funny okay. that we suck so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These Copy poor that. travel influencers. Yeah. <laughs> Copy oh. that. <laughs> yeah. Our next we cut that is, of course, in Florida where we're dealing with a woman who was, I think, unjustly arrested. Sure, sure. From wild941.com. Florida wife gets arrested after pantsing husband in public. If you can't pants your husband, Mm -hmm. what can you do? Huh? Yep. Yep. But so she pants her husband, but he was found passed out on the sidewalk and he was... No, naked, covered in urine, and Erica, we cut that. Yeah, you can't right. get into it. Yeah. yeah, all right. Our next story from the Scottish Sun dot co dot uk: kilt in the act. A pensioner wore a short kilt and no underwear to do his gardening and stunned his neighbors who could see everything. You know, it gets hot and you got to garden and what you got to garden in. I just, I hope that he was not doing anything that could possibly cut his legs. This is this is. A global warming story. <laughs> if gentlemen yeah. in Scotland are getting too hot, <laughs> the earth is warm, heating up. <sighs> oh, yes. Another UK story. The Daily UK. A travel blogger went to a bizarre penis village where everything you can think of is phallus shaped. I mean, I'm down. You know? I mean, he's been to 195 countries. What else is left? Yeah. You know? Ay, ay, ay. But Cass, are you ready? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. No, but like, yes, are you like, let me do it like a hype man. <clears throat> are you ready? Ah! <laughs> it's time for the dumpster fire <laughs> of the week. Oh my God. <laughs> www.cbc.ca slash news slash Canada. We've talked on this podcast about how much I love a car chase, mm-hmm. and I didn't think I could love anything more, but it turns out I just might like a canoe chase a little bit more. <laughs> this was sent in by many people. I believe Tina Curry was one of them. I be- there were so many people that sent this story because it's just a great one. So yeah, a Niagara man drove a truck down to Hamilton Trail. And then he tried to steal a canoe from people in the water. He was he was looking to use this canoe as a getaway vehicle. So he was riding. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Just to set the scene. Mm-hmm. Yes. If you like to ride a bike mm. along here, this is a waterfront trail near Princess Point and offered, uh, normally offers a view of foliage, wildlife and Coots Paradise in Hamilton. Wow. Whatever all those words mean. But <laughs> this guy... There was a man who was doing this bike ride, mm-hmm. and he saw a pickup truck barreling towards him. I could tell it wasn't a parks worker. I was just shocked, he reported. He tried to get his phone out and snap a picture, but the truck was too far away to get the license plate. Mm-hmm. But he did watch the rest of what happened, which is that this guy gets out of a truck and is like, hey, bitch. To someone, I don't know. I'm maybe he didn't say that, but hey, bitch, give me your canoe. That was the tone for sure. Yeah, yeah. So this 39 year old man just tried to canoe jack somebody, which is, I mean, I just, I love it. 
I love it because here's the thing. You can't go super fast in a canoe. That's a two-man operation. <laughs> this guy was definitely th- – like this was boy math, if mm-hmm. you will. Um, <laughs> ah. Or just like that false kind of sense of confidence of like – because it also sounds like he drove his truck basically into the water. And he was like, this is no boat. <laughs> And just really thought that he was going to get in a canoe and, like, nail it. You know? Honestly, yeah. He, he, he thought he like, was going to get in there and just nail it. This will like, definitely work. And the co- police will have to catch me all the way to Niagara Falls, and then I'll go over the falls in the canoe, and I'll be fine, of course, because a canoe floats. And the police will be in their trucks, and they won't be able to get me. This is They won't be able to is, find me. Boy map, this is like meth logic. <laughs> not all, not even will the dogs be able to pick up my DNA because it's washed off me now because I'm in the water. <laughs> it's, um, he did get caught. Yes. Duh. <laughs> and uh, the guy who was riding his bike made a, just a last minute comment, you know, uh, just, just if he may add, if he could chime in that perhaps they should be putting, um, some like cement stakes of sorts around the pathways to prevent crazy people's trucks barreling through and potentially hurting or canoe jacking again. Listen, I'm all for, you know, I'm a progressive liberal person and I'm all for government interference when we need it, just keeping us on the rails. I'm not a small government person, but sure. putting in concrete to prevent another canoe jacking feels like an overreach of government to me. Girl, these bicyclists <laughs> just all, oh my God, wah, wah. we don't want to get hit by cars. Please wah, make protected, wah. please make protected no. bike lanes. Wah, wah, wah. Can I say something controversial? Because I was, of course, being sarcastic. Of course, please. Because I do think that we should have protected bike lanes Absolutely. everywhere. I really like to ride my bike and I'm afraid to do it in LA. But I'm just going to say something. Mm-hmm. Hey, bicyclists, if you're going to fight for protected bike lanes and mm-hmm. stuff, stop running red lights. Boom. Please. Honestly, yes. Yes. Are you insane? Like, it's already dangerous enough that you're riding your bike in LA, which again, I really wish was a safer thing. Mm-hmm. I would do it if it was safer. But like, don't tempt fate just because uh, you like follow the rules of the fucking road if you're gonna simultaneously bitch that it's not safe you know mm-hmm. and you know hashtag not all bicyclists okay mm, but, but like most. i see mm. i see it enough i'm see like enough you're fucking stupid you yeah. know you're not gonna get sideswiped right now but you might get t-boned because you think that you can just slowly glide through a red light because you don't see anybody coming mm-hmm. oh my god use your fucking brain erica what are you hoarding bike lanes no uh <laughs> art but the right size of art nothing you're hoarding art yeah yeah okay art. nothing okay. bums me out more than seeing a place, a wall, mostly in people's homes, I'll say that, but restaurants, public places where the wall is there and there's one piece of art, which is fine, but it's the wrong size. Like it's too small. Most of the time, art is too small. But when it's when it's the right size, I absolutely love it. There's a perfect equation to what visually should go somewhere. And I love it when somebody follows those rules. I just love art and I think we should have more of it, but it has to be the right size art. That's me being persnickety, but it has to, I just love it. I love it. It shows me a lot about a person, about their thoughts. I know. I just love art. I, I am. Okay. I'm, I'm a natural patron of the arts. You know, sure. I just, I love it. I love it. I love art. Thoughtful but design. Thoughtful design. The right size art. <laughs> When you walk into a place and you're like, that picture frame is way too small to be the only thing on that wall. That's a bummer. But when uh-huh. it's, oh my God, that's the perfect size canvas for that wall. Oh, nothing gets me more excited. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's me. What are you cool. hoarding? Um, I'm hoarding uh, doing your doing a 5K, you guys. I think I've maybe I've hoarded it before. Maybe I haven't. I don't know. Doing a 5K though. If you're listening to this, I have done the 5K. Mm-hmm. 
This is the second year in a row that I'm doing this specific one and really encourage people to do it. I mean, you don't have to run because you don't what? even have to jog. Ain't a marathon. Nope. Ooh, and you don't... get some notes about marathon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gosh, look at me. I'm hoarding a, a race when we just absolutely. But I think a 5K is significantly less Beautiful. offensive. It's, yeah. it's nice. A lot of them are raising money for charity, mm -hmm. you know. It's what is it? It's going to cost you maybe like 40 bucks to tops. Dinner. Yeah. 40 to 60 bucks. It's going to go to charity and maybe like a ha an afternoon, mm -hmm. you know, and a 5k for, you know, us uncultured swine in America <laughs> who don't use kilometers. That's only 3.1 miles. I've walked many a 5k. You will walk one on accident depending on where your gate is to your connecting flight <laughs> that you decided to connect through Salt Lake City because it was $40 cheaper than going straight through, you might have just walked a 5K to do that. <laughs> so treat yourself, accomplish mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. do it for the gram. You usually get a medal and a banana at the finish line. Or a t-shirt. You, yo, yeah, you're getting a t-shirt for sure. You're getting a number. I mean, you're getting this whole thing. And it's 3.1 miles. Mm -hmm. You can walk it, challenge yourself if you want to. Yeah. But I'm just encouraging all of our listeners to like, you know, a, a turkey trot, oh, if you will, mm -hmm. something like that. Those are usually 5Ks. I don't know. Just challenge yourself and try to do it because why not? I am. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, again, this is my second year in a row and I'm just really excited to do it. And I'm probably going to walk it this year for like reasons that I won't get into. Mm -hmm. But like, I'm, yeah, you know, do it. I can't wait till we get the notes of like, I can't go outside. This is, <laughs> I have allergies to everything and I've never been outside of my bubble and we get like the bubble boy notes. So we're going to get feedback, you know, from that. I simply can't because mm -hmm. also they're, they do virtual versions of these five Ks. <laughs> do they? Yeah. I don't know like who I see that and I go, who the hell would want this? Is this like a pandemic thing? But like, mm -hmm. maybe. You hear that bubble boy? Do a virtual 5k. Do a virtual one. Buy yourself a treadmill and do a virtual one. Like it's just 3.1 miles. 3.1 miles is just not as far as it sounds. It's really, mm -hmm. it's really, really not. not. Yeah. You can do this. Again, I've walked many of them when it's like, oh, we're going to do it as a group and we're going to run. And I'm like, <laughs> I'll see y'all at the restaurant in an hour. <laughs> yeah. It'll take me a minute. <laughs> Pop some headphones in, get yourself a good and dirty uh, audiobook, and just like do a 5K. And again, yeah. do it for the gram. Do get it. pictures. Like, oh, like f fake your time. Be like, wow. Like, honestly, it was so incredible coming in third place. Yeah. You know? It's pretty uh, insane, like, because I usually set my times to be pretty slow, and mm -hmm. then I'll just, like, I'll pass people if I need to. But, like, the people who are, like, run competitively, those idiots that we talk about who do marathons, the way that they – because they'll release you in groups so that uh -huh. you don't get in those people's way. Oh, that's and smart. And the way that they – legitimately finish the race before like the back group of like people with strollers and walking even leave yeah i mean they're running six minute miles yeah so if you're just doing oh. a 5k you're you're done in 20 minutes if you're like a running person and here i am with like the sloths and the snails the literal sloths and snails and i'm like do you guys mind slowing down just so we can not embarrass me <laughs> I mean, if if you're walking, I'm walking with my dog who has to stop and piss and bother other dogs and people every like five minutes. And yeah. I'm still getting a mile done in about 22 minutes. So I'm going to finish this thing in about an hour. And I yeah. feel like that's an hour of my day. I'm going to spend more time driving to there. Dodger Stadium. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So anyways, do a 5K, treat yourself. It really feels like a good accomplishment. I know I just downplayed like how much, how easy it was, like and how it's like really not shit, but it really does feel like a big accomplishment when you do it. Yeah. Yeah. What are you throwing out? Video podcast. If I wanted to see your fucking face, start a YouTube. I, it's an audio medium. I hate video podcasts. I know it's a monetization strategy. I know it's a cash grab. I know it's a way to get more eyeballs on ear holes, ear holes on the podcast in general, but I hate video podcasts. I hate it. I'm like, you guys just TV'd. You guys just made TV of podcasts. Podcasts are supposed to be 
listening, hearing. I don't need to see you. I don't want to ever be have to be camera ready for a podcast. It makes me so angry. If you Wait. want a video podcast, start a YouTube. Wait. Yeah. Aren't we weren't we thinking about potentially introducing a video element to trashy trashy? Absolutely. And every week we look at each other and we say, next week we'll be camera ready. <laughs> That's a lie we've been telling ourselves for a year. I just want to put that out there that like. Oh, absolutely. We're you just, I mean, you just, you gave everyone like a way, like, because we've literally said, hey, oh, we could do this. Mm -hmm. Like, it might be a way to get more people to listen Mm -hmm. and monetize it. Like, you literally, okay. I'm just saying, did you, like, what are you throwing out? A mirror is basically what you just (gasps) did. And like, no, you can, I know. Okay. it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I'm just, yeah. I'm honestly like very shaken. <laughs> yeah. As one should be. No, listen, are we probably going to do it? Absolutely. But just the concept makes me angry. Oh yeah. You're, I think you're being, you're mad that we're being pushed to do it. It's kind of like when influencing became popular and then all of us who were actors who'd taken thousands of dollars of classes and thousands of dollars of improv and like live performances and all this stuff mm-hmm. r- started to realize Oh, we just have to sit there and like mm-hmm. make our armpits fart on camera. And then those people are getting fucking deals. Yeah. And then it's, it's one of those things where you're like, this wouldn't exist if one person didn't make the choice to do it. And now they've just fucked us all. L Fanning didn't get the lead in a show. Didn't get on cast on a show. L fucking Fanning of the Fanning acting dynasty because her social media wasn't big enough. Yeah. So make that make sense. Luckily, those days are a little bit behind us because they're realizing that a lot of these people are not good actors. And then you had a had a real Jake Paul on our hands of like, oof, I don't think we can invest in these people. Um, but he's so doing he a lot for the fighting unions. Did you know that? He's doing things for fighting unions? He's like a boxer now, the Jake. And he's like trying to make a, Girl, a union for I boxing. I didn't talk like- about you again. Oh my God. Fucking Siri. <laughs> Siri's like, what do you mean about what fighting mean? unions? Yeah. Listen to the podcast, Siri. No, Jake Paul's like, actually, like, I've come around. I kind of like him. I can't. I can't. I know. We I can't get into stop it. You. I know. Okay. What are you throwing away? That pisses me off. I know, but I really think he's doing right. Oh, Jesus. He didn't need the money. He's trying to help other people. And he's putting women on the cards for these boxing Girl. events. Like, I'm just saying, I, I think baby bo- he's become baby boy. And I never thought it would be, but he's become baby boy. Anyway, we can't get well, into that. What everyone just deserves <laughs> second, third, and fourth chances, don't they? Now, Logan, I'm... go suck a rock. But Jake? Oh, my God. I'm putting money on the young one. Yeah. Okay. All I right. need okay. someone who's in a thousands of dollar acting class with Logan Paul. Really? Anyways, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was before he became famous on internet and then didn't have to do it anymore. <laughs> I'm throwing out, hey, there's some laws out there. Yeah that say that you can't start construction work until after a certain time Mm -hmm. or you can't barrel down the road in a big truck to drop shit off at a certain after like before a certain time yeah those laws exist and people who who don't obey them is what i'm throwing out we live in a society Mm mm-hmm is it a perfect society? No, it's not. Mm-mm. And I don't agree with a lot of things like that our society and stuff goes with. But what I do agree with, and I think that everyone should agree with, why the fuck are you starting work at 7 a.m. on a Saturday? Mm-hmm. That's against the law. But like people just do it anyways. And it's like, I looked at the weather. Mm-hmm. It's going to be 60 degrees until 2. So it's don't don't fucking come at me and say, "Oh, well it just gets so hot for these workers." No, it's not. You whoever you are, this the big boss who sends mm-hmm. these workers out, mm-hmm. you just have no respect for the fucking law. And what Wallace. am I going to do? Am I going to call the police? No. No. I'm not going to call the police and make your workers have to deal with the police. But like, what is, if you don't, if you don't subscribe to at least the bare minimum of moral codes, don't kill, don't, don't steal, Mm -hmm. don't start work, construction work 
before 8 a.m. Yeah. on weekends. If you can't subscribe to those rules, then we are no better than apes. <laughs> and this is just anarchy. This. Yeah. We are no better than yeah. lions. We are no yeah. better than than animals. Yeah. If this is if we can't even do this. Yeah. So I agree. I agree. I, I think I'm with you. In general, construction people, I'm not like, Ooh. don't come for me. <laughs> like certain certain contractors and construction people, man, mm. they just think that they're fucking God, don't they? <laughs> I'll show up when I feel like it yeah. and I'll give you no notice. Yeah. Like, crazy. girl, anyways. Where whatever. can the people find you? They won't find you working at 7 a.m. on a Saturday, but where can they find you? <laughs> I don't know. Here, okay. where can I find you? At Iconic Erica Curry on Instagram, Thread, Spill, TikTok. I think that's all. And you can find this podcast at Trashy Trashy Pod on all of those social medias, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Threads, Spill, Blue Sky. You can find our website at TrashyTrashyPodcast.com. This is where you can send in stories. Tell us why you're trash or, you know, a story you'd like us to cover. Our merch store is at uh, trashy trashy podcast.threadless.com. There is a sale for $13 t shirts right now. So go ahead and pick yourself up one. And you can find us on any podcast platform. Our email is trashy trashy podcast at gmail.com. If you don't want to go to the website, but you still want us to cover something or send us in why you're trashed. We appreciate you listening every week. We appreciate you telling a friend. This is what helps this podcast grow is leaving five stars in the app store, wherever you listen to a podcast and telling a friend, it really helps us grow, helps us continue to keep the lights on. And we love helps you all. Helps us continue to stay off camera. <laughs> we promise we'll stay off camera if you continue to support us. <laughs> oh, hey, Cass. What's going on, girl? Stay garbage. You stay garbage, girl. I will. Bye-bye. Hey, bye. Hey, bye. Erica, do you have any concerts coming up? Always. I'm a festival girly, you know. I have to get the VIP, though, because I, I cannot go without an air-conditioned bathroom. Okay, well, my sweet angel, planning for faster and efficient hydration is also essential for festivals. And Liquid IV has you covered while you prep before, power through that headliner, and recover after the weekend. Hey, now, don't count yourself out while you're drunk poolside all summer, Cass. Liquid IV hydrates two times faster than water and with three times the electrolytes, than traditional sports drinks. I mean, we really have no excuses. Liquid IV is actually standard in my purse. It goes phone, wallet, keys, liquid IV. And with flavors like lemon lime, pastique, that's French for watermelon, oh. and my favorite, strawberry lemonade, saying hydrated is easy peasy. Mama, I'm talking B3. I'm talking B5. I'm talking B6. And I'm screaming from the rooftops, B12. They've got all the Bs. And there's a little bit of vitamin C in there, too, just for kicks. Oh, she's made from premium ingredients and is free from gluten, dairy, and soy. Oh, thank God. Yeah, I'm vegan now. I don't know if I've talked about that yet. We know. We know. Okay. Get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code TRASHY at checkout. That's 20% off of anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code TRASHY at liquidiv.com. Honestly, we're so trashy, we're hydrated. Wet trash.